Hi everyone, it's Ren here. How you doing guys? Sorry about that. Um, today I've decided that I was feeling good enough to make a video about the INFJ humor. <laughs> um, it's, I think it's a, it's a topic that I have been asked to do quite often. Sometimes as a you know direct suggestion, sometimes as an indirect one. Um, but so, somehow I've never, I don't think I've ever done one directly about humor. I've certainly mentioned the topic of INFJ humor in the past, but to say that I've actually um, specifically dedicated, you know what? Recently I passed the 200 mark, you know, 200 videos mark. It's quite possible that I actually made a video about the INFJ humor and I just don't remember. <laughs> So if that's the case, I apologize. But intuitively, I would say, I don't think I have made specifically about that. And so I guess like the first question that I could ask myself is, why not? I mean, isn't that kind of a topic that's well known? Um, like that INFJs are supposed to have some specific kind of humor. And um, at least in theory, it doesn't seem to be a topic that is conceptually hard. Maybe it could rely on just giving examples and 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 also I could assume that that's going to be something that attracts people. So really the incentive is here to um, to make a video and yes, I have not, uh, which is very strange. Um, but in any case, regardless of the unbelievable uh, strangeness of this situation, it looks like I'm addressing and fixing this right now. Uh, so, so what to say about this particular topic and what I think about it and whether I relate to it. So I would say that, you know, it's hard to, it's hard to know whether you resonate with such a thing as an INFJ humor or whether you can identify that, that there is, uh, you know, an INFJ kind of approach to, to, to being humorous, to being comedic. Um, as long as... It's hard to be sure about that or to identify it, put the finger on it. As long as, as long as you have not been able to verify that other INFJs are messed up in the head <laughs> just like you are. Um, and of course, this is not necessarily something that you can discover straight away because um, assuming that the INFJ kind of humor is really the way it is, um, well, there's something irreverent about it and there's something kind of boundary crossing about it, contrary to what we may think. Um, and um, far, far from tame um, when the INFJ is comfortable, you know? So that's not always going to be the case, you know, the, the, for the INFJ humor to transpire in the most crystalline way possible, it's really important that the INFJ is as, as little chameleon-esque as possible uh, because otherwise the INFJ can just not only embrace uh, different styles of personalities or temperaments, uh, but also different kinds of humor really, even though it's not really their humor. Uh, I've often been told, quite a few times actually been told that I had a fake laugh and this could be seen as, as an inauthentic kind of feature. And perhaps it is, but to me, it's a mostly unconscious thing. It's my way of of trying to make sure that I fit in, that like I don't um, make the other person um, feel uncomfortable if they say something. And I'm like, perhaps my real self is not hyper massively amused or like head over heels about how funny that was. But, you know, I, I kind of go like, <laughs> that's kind of, I know I did that at the start of the video, but that was that was not fakeness. Maybe with slight awkwardness, but um, sometimes I can have that laugh. And some good friends of mine and sort of some former significant others have been able to like identify that that's kind of not really. Like, it's a sign that I don't, you know, I'm adapting myself. It's a chameleon esque kind of approach. So that's a trait that INFJs can have. And so a lot of people might think that the humor of an INFJ is either kind of nondescript or just really hard to place just because we seem as if like we're potentially embracing most kinds of humor, depending on the kind of audience we have, depending on the, our interlocutor. 
we very much adapt the kind of things that we say, including in the humorous realm, because that can be a touchy realm, uh, all the time. I think that anyone who's not a sociopath or, or anyone who has social skills will have this kind of need for adaptation in mind. But I would argue, and based on my experience, I would really contend that that those traits are hyper-emphasized in the case of an INFJ. Um, and so there are people who get to know us. People sometimes will never get to know us well, and that's the majority of people. And they probably, as a result, they will never get to know our humor that well either. Um, which is pretty synonymous with not knowing someone well, if you don't know the kind of humor that they really have. Um, and then there's the people that don't know us well for a while, and eventually we open up, they open up to us, and we become closer. Again, whether as close friends or sometimes as significant others. And then there's always a moment, at least there's always been a moment, uh, like in, in my life each time, where they just go like, oh my God, like you, you seem so, like such an angel uh, at first. And it turns out like you're, you're so bad, you know? And that's, you know, like I'm being honest with you, you know, you don't repeat that to any of my future employers. Uh, <laughs> but uh, people literally would say things like, yeah, you're so bad compared to, you know, like not, not that my humor is horrible in terms of its irreverence or in terms of its uh, transgression. Uh, but it is, it, is, it is bad, so to speak, relative to the angelic image that I had. And that has, that's been mentioned to me ever since I was a kid by teachers in school, you know, who sometimes would be told by other students about what I was kind of doing behind the scenes. Uh, but that, I think these days, obviously, I'm no longer a pupil. Uh, but there is definitely still that element of like, you know, um, being a certain way and then like having these real funny but in my opinion unavailable thoughts as long as the person is not like a demarcated safe territory i know how they're gonna take it i know they're gonna appreciate it i have a feeling that i don't want to be like kind of called out or i want i don't want to be sort of like disclosed as this person because humor is kind of an intimate it's very it's very it's a very intimate thing which would lead us to like a discussion about the whole concept of what humor is and and that's, that's a whole other topic, of course, but um, what humor comes from philosophically and all these things. Um, but energy humor, just you need to look through, you need to, to, to make the chameleon comfortable enough to open up and to really be themselves and, and reveal the innermost essence of their thoughts. And within the innermost essence of their thoughts, there will be the essence of their humor. Uh, and I would say that with me, you know, the, the, the humor tends to be very much like I, what I like is to to play with established norms and really test the, the limit limits. And so sometimes I can legitimately um, say things that could be potentially shocking to someone who was just happened to be hyper, like hyper rigid about this is something that we cannot laugh about. Now there's a temptation here to to propose that there is a, a differentiation, an opposition, or a contrast between the FE approach and the FI approach, because we might think FE is is aware of, of the external sort of rules, which means that if the external rules that govern how humor is expressed implicitly or explicitly, if they are such that we don't do say this, we don't. But the thing is, because these rules are external. They can change, and there can be uh, situations where we feel like we can actually come, you know, come up with things that perhaps we wouldn't have said in another context, something a little bit more provocative or shocking, or irreverence, um, some extremely sarcastic stuff, you know, making fun of things and people, from a sarcastic point of view, you know. But and I, I, I would really deny that this is ever from from a malicious point of view, unless again the person is unhealthy. But that's not specifically an INFJ thing. But I think that, yeah, a lot of the time, the uh, the intention is never evil, is, is very uh, rarely malevolent, but nevertheless, they can come across as that. And an INFJ is less likely, I think, to be shocked um, because of their flexibility than an FI user who would happen to, within their internal realm evaluation, to just disagree with a particular kind of humor or an utterance that... Regardless of the context, it's not so much that they are stuck up. 
maybe they are exactly like us. You know, like there can be some very, and you know that you've seen among comedians, there can be some very irreverent INFPs, for example. Um, but it's almost like from the start, it needs to be part of their internal compass that that's okay. Uh, if as part of their internal compass, some, some things are not okay, it's very hard to make them change their mind about that, to make, make them adapt, adapt themselves in opposition or in contrast, the INFJ is much more flexible, changes, changes caps all the time. Um, but that being said, I would say that often my humor is enhanced by other people, uh, as should be, you know, if you, if you make la jokes uh, by yourself all the time, maybe you need to uh, consider seeing a shrink. Um, but I have found that there's, you know, when you, something turns into like a really long private joke, really hilarious, it, it, you can't stop laughing. There needs to be some kind of really magical interplay with lots of chemistry. I have found that a lot of the time, the it never works better for me than with, with an NE user. NE not only has the power to make me laugh, I, I find the associations and the observations, sometimes coming from FI with NE, sometimes from TI with NE, because ENTPs and especially INTPs, like FI, I find extremely funny. Uh, paradoxically, they're not as much about transgression Transgressions amuse me and excite me because I'm still with Effie aware that I'm transgressing or when I hear a transgressive joke. I think with INTPs, the Effie is less influential and so it's almost like they don't really get this excitement or pleasure from the idea of flirting with a transgression in the first place because they don't feel like there's going to be one made. But there is still like, INTPs are just amused by so many things and the way in which they are amused by them. I find funny in itself. Uh, but INFPs, you know, my brother and my friend Pierre, like they're two of the most, the funniest people I know, at least that make me laugh the most. And they're both, you know, auxiliary any users with a lot of FI, little sharp insights. And uh, and I find that any is something that really delights me. And I, I, and I bounce back, you know, this is something with which I can have a very interesting dynamic um, and we can make each other laugh for literally hours sometimes. Um, and I think I feed off the, the, the NE with my NI and there's like this interaction. I probably come up with some NE stuff as well, you know, as a result. But I find the interaction with INFPs and, and INTPs particularly nice. I, could, I, I wish I could say that about INFJs too. I think it's possible, but it's just I, I, I happen to rarely be uh, in a situation where, you know, I manipulate humor, at least in real life with, with an INFJ because I've been specifically talking about real life here. But this was a little bit of insight about my INFJ humor, and I would be very curious to know what you guys think. What is your guys' position on the, the topic? How do you relate to your humor? Do you think that there is an INFJ kind of humor? And if so, to what extent do you agree with my vision and insights about this? Uh, do you disagree? What would you like to add as a compliment? Let me know in the comments, and uh, I'll see you soon, guys. Enjoy your Wednesday. Ciao.